When you think of the world's largest projects, large countries with high populations like China, India, and the USA usually come to mind. So it would come as a surprise to say that Libya was home to the world's largest irrigation project. Libya, located in North Africa, surrounded by the vast Sahara Desert, with a population living predominantly alongside the Mediterranean coast. Libya has three historical regions, the Northwest region, Tripolitania, the East, Cyrenaica, and Fezzan in the Southwest, the major cities being Tripoli, the de facto capital, Misrata, and Benghazi. The country of Libya has been under rule for many empires, from the Romans to the Ottomans, and then to a colony under Mernade, with the country being one of the poorest countries in the world. After the discovery of oil in 1959, the fortunes of Libya changed. Overnight, the country became a wealthy state. The concentration of wealth in the hands of the king fueled resentment from factions within the country. Building up to a 1969 coup d'etat by a military officer, Muammar Gaddafi, Colonel Gaddafi's 42-year rule of Libya was modeled on egalitarianism and a direct economy, but was really an authoritarian state concentrating power around Gaddafi's family and inner circle. Ruling with an iron fist and a vocal opposition to the Western countries led to Gaddafi gaining a lot of enemies, culminating in the February 17th revolution by Libyans across Libya, backed by NATO air support with an eight-month campaign leading to the capture and killing of the colonel in his hometown of Sirte. Over the next 10 years, Libya has been in a semi-constant state of war with no stable governments, leading to neglect of government-owned entities such as the man-made river, which is in an incomplete state, as well as the shutting of the water supply to mount pressure during times of war by opposing sides. The state the country is in has led to some referring to Libya as a failed state. In the 1980s, Libya was facing a crisis, with scarcely any downpour, only 10 mm to 500 mm, being able to provide water was quickly becoming a concerning issue. On the hunt for oil, a vast water supply was found under the Sahara Desert. Analysis indicated that the basins were a Nubian sandstone aquifer system, a vast reservoir of fossil water that is anywhere from 10,000 to 1 million years old water having penetrated the sandstone before the end of the last ice age. This mega water supply was to be used for large-scale agricultural projects, reducing the reliance on foreign imports of food into the country and developing a new agricultural industry. However, due to the looming water crisis, multiple solutions were imposed. These included desalination plants, water transports by giant hauliers, and passing on the water by pipeline from southern Europe it was concluded that there is no answer for the water emergency in Libya, other than vast quantities of water found under the Libyan desert. This would be coined the Great Man-Made River, the world's largest irrigation project and Gaddafi's proclaimed eighth wonder of the world. The Great Man-Made River would contain the largest underground network of pipe, 2,830 kilometers, and aqueducts in the world. This consists of more than 1,300 wells deeper than 500 meters and supplies 6.5 million cubic meters of fresh water to Libyan cities. The first discovery, as well as the most significant water supply, was the Kufra Basin, which has expected groundwater stockpiling limit of 20,000 cubic kilometers, trailed by the Sirt Basin, with 10,000 cubic kilometers of water, the Merzouk Basin, with a capacity limit of 4,800 cubic kilometers, and the Hamadan Basin, with a limit of 4,000 cubic kilometers. The overall cost of the project was over $25 billion with Libyan officials, citing the enormous size of the underground reservoirs would supply Libyans water for thousands of years. However, some critics say that Libyan officials overestimated these claims. Some insist that the great man-made river an unrenewable fossil source of water with no recharge might not last through the 21st century. On the 28th of August, 1984, the project started, with five phases being planned. Phase one involved the digging of hundreds of wells at two fields, Tazirbu and Sarir, where water was pumped up from a depth of some 500 meters, 1,650 feet. From Sarir, 
Water from both fields was pumped underground through a double pipeline to a holding reservoir in Ajdabiya that distributed water to the cities of Benghazi and Sirte. By 1991, Phase 1 was completed, with the capabilities of transporting 2 million cubic meters of water per day through 1,000 miles of double pipeline. During Phase 1, 250,000 sections of pipe were laid, which at the time was said to be the largest of its kind in the world. Each pipe had a diameter of 4 meters and a length of 7 meters. Locally manufactured, the pipe was made up of layers of steel-reinforced pre-stressed concrete. The sections were laid in trenches 7 meters deep by specially built cranes and pushed into place by bulldozers. Then, the joints were sealed with giant rubber o-rings and cement grout, and the sections of trench were filled in. The second phase, in 1996, involved the supply of drinking water to the western coast. The source of water here was three wells from the Habal Ahasawina region. From Khazar al Shuwe Rift, one pipeline pumps water to Tarhuna in the Nafusa Plateau region, whence it flows by gravity to the Al Jifara Plain. Another pipeline goes north and eastwards to the coast, where it then turns west and supplies cities such as Mizurata and Al Qums before ending at the capital Tripoli. Phase 2 design capacity was 2.5 million cubic meters of water a day, with only a fraction used for drinking water. Phase 3, completed in 2009, was split into two parts. The first part added 700 kilometers of new pipeline and pumping stations to increase the total daily supply capacity of the existing system to 3.68 million cubic meters. The second part provided 138,000 cubic meters a day to the city of Tobruk an additional 500-kilometer pipeline and a new reservoir south of the Tobruk. Phase 4 and 5 haven't been completed yet due to the 2011 Libyan Civil War, but once met, includes an extension of the system southward to well fields in the al Kafra region. A pipeline from wells near Gadames in the western desert to the coastal cities of al Zawiya and Zuwara, west of Tripoli, as well as further connections between Phase 1 and 2. On completion, Phases 4 and 5 will add another 4,500 kilometers of pipelines, supplying a total of 6.5 million cubic meters of water per day. Since the 2011 Civil War, the Great Man-Made River has suffered from damage and neglect with war factions leveraging the water supply, leading to around 2 million Libyans facing a shortage of water. Currently, the state of Libya's internal politics and governance are in question. It is yet to be seen whether large infrastructure projects such as the man-made river are viable to be continued if hostilities come to an end due to the nature of extensive repairs to be carried out before expansion. What can definitely be said, however, is that the once beautiful and flourishing country may have more pressing basic infrastructure projects and repairs to carry out once this civil war is over, and we may not see the passion project of Gaddafi ever come to fruition. Thanks for watching. Be sure to like and subscribe.